It has been a strange last year and a half, but after taking the year off in 2020, Gen Con is returning for a physical presence at the Indianapolis Convention Center this year, uh, just a week from the time this video will be launching. So we are returning to do the thing that we used to do in the past, which is give you a little overview, a little preview of a lot of the new releases from different publishers that are going to be highlighted at the show. Uh, there's also a lot of things that are not going to be at the show <laughs> this year from some big publishers, namely uh, stuff from the Asmodee umbrella. You will not be hearing us talk about uh, on this on any part of this episode. But uh, that doesn't mean that there's not stuff to talk about. There mm -hmm. are still going to be several, and several is probably putting it mildly, <laughs> <laughs> dozens of publishers there with some pretty cool games to show off. So we're talking about uh, a lot of the bigger ones that we're excited about, and hopefully you will be too. If you don't remember how this went, don't worry. I forgot as well. We're going to pretty much go through these companies in alphabetical order, not like by how excited we are. Starting off with the letter A, of course, means we're also going to start off with usually the first one, AEG. Now, they've got some cool new releases. We've got Cascadia, a game in which you would need to make sure you balance the environment, not by just the hexes you place in the environment that you grow, but the animals there as well. 10 is a new family-friendly card game. And then there's also Whirling Witchcraft, a game in which you need to manage your own cauldron while trying to hopefully make your opponent's cauldron overflow. Now, I know this is for a later release, but I also would not be surprised if we see a little bit, maybe even sales for the new Knights of the Round Table group for Smash Up. Yeah, I was going to say, probably a safe bet there might be some smash-up stuff going on there. Uh, but AEG has been, uh, you know, piquing my interest. Uh, they, they usually do, but in the last few years, too, with they've been having some cool, very different kind of original games. You know, they very rarely have, like, they don't do licenses. They don't do so many sequels. They have uh, some pretty interesting new ones. And 10 seems like a, a good bet for, like, the... It might be like one of the popular kind of family accessible card mm -hmm. games uh, this year. Uh, Arcane Wonders also going to be at Gen Con, and they've got a fair few things going on. Uh, there's Furnace, which we got to review a, a copy from a different publisher, but Arcane Wonders is doing it in the U.S. Uh, and this is an auction game about uh, 19th century uh, entrepreneurship. <laughs> You're trying to get different resources and produce factory lines and things like that. Uh, they also have a couple new new expansions uh, for Onitama, Light and Shadow has a new ninja piece that moves secretly and has a couple different ways you can work that into that game. Uh, and for their game Viral, which is all about different viruses infecting a, a, a body, an organism, they have the new expansion, The Hive. Now everyone has an asymmetric different virus faction that can uh, gain new abilities as the game goes on. There's also a game called Air, Land and Sea, and they have a new edition of that called Critters at War. War, which thing is basically the same gameplay, but uh, it's got critters in it now. So it's a different kind of animal theme to it. But some, some interesting ones there if you like Arcane Wonder stuff. Mm -hmm. Ares Games going to be there. First off, we have a revised edition for last Friday. This is based on your classic slasher horror movie that has hidden movements. So you'll have to be careful and try to avoid, of course, the murderer. And hopefully you don't end up like how the movies end. We've also got Sword and Sorcery Ancient Chronicles. The Sword and Sorcery series is a campaign game where you work together, and this one actually takes place uh, pr in previous to the last one. It's sort of a uh, prequel. That's the word I'm looking for. We'll see how the storylines connect there. We've also got a War of the Ring, The Fate of Erebor, but this was actually a promo pack that was in included in a previous product, but now you can pick it up if you missed out on that. Yeah, War of the Ring, a game I have yet to play, but I really want to. <laughs> Some, someday we're going to we're gonna get to that one. And curious about Last Friday, too, because um, that game is, you know, it's been through some stuff. There's been a few different kind of mm -hmm. like iterations of it. Uh, Asmati Games is going to be there with a couple new additions to the One Deck Dungeon line that I'm personally interested in. These are co-op or solo uh, dice-driven games. You're going through dungeons and a deck of cards. So for One Deck Dungeon, there's Abyssal Depths, a new expansion, and they also are going to be showing off One Deck Galaxy, which is the sci-fi version of that system that I've been, feel like I, they've been talking about it for a couple years now at Gen Con. I've been waiting to see it in person. They also have a game called Good Puppers, which is about good puppers. So, I mean, what I don't know, I'm in. What else do you need to know about that one? It's all there for you. Speaking of puppers, there's Bezier Games, though they deal usually with the more scary kind of werewolves. And on that note, we have Ultimate Werewolf 
extreme. Unfortunately, this is not what I initially thought it was, which had 90s extreme artwork, but this is a bigger collection that of course includes a new free app to help you play the game as well as play multiple games at once. So definitely something to take a look at if you're a big werewolf fan. We've also got their Suburbia second edition there, including the expansions for that. Uh, we played the original one and I've always loved that. So I'm excited to see what the second one and that is now hopefully um, more hitting retail sales there instead of just being a, a Kickstarter find. Yeah, I think that game's definitely worthy of a second edition. So that hopefully there's some cool uh, stuff in that one. Uh, Board and Dice has a release called Origins First Builders. And uh, this one comes from one of the designers who worked on games like uh, Nemesis was under there and some other big titles that you may have heard of. And it's, uh, you know, it's one of these civilization building games. When this one, the premise is that aliens actually did come to ancient civilizations and you're competing to try to build all the ancient historical monuments they want you to build, <laughs> uh, which I think is a fun premise. If you like the kind of meteor Euro style game uh, with an interesting theme, that's Origins First Builders. Yeah, that one definitely caught my eye as well. I'm going to have to see how that plays and also as well as it stands out from the civilization style games, which I don't think were flooded, but there's it's not the first. There's a few of them out there, yeah. <laughs> but moving on, we've got Brotherwise Games. They've got a new Dragon Prince game based off the Netflix show, the Dragon Prince Battle Charge. Another game that is once again reminding me, well, you really should go watch the Dragon Prince. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then there's Knight of the Ninja. This is an interesting social deduction game where your goal is to kill your enemy but you don't know who your enemy is. So you're gonna have to balance playing cards that give you more information as well as the ones that let you do the assassinations. So this does seem like an interesting twist on uh, the social deduction games, which are also pretty common uh, in the board game world. So I'm definitely gonna see what they did to make it stand out. Yeah, you gotta find twists there. I need to get back to, I don't think I watched the latest Dragon Prince season. I fell off of it, but. So you're show. still farther than me. <laughs> that's, that's true. Until you watch it, I will always be farther than you. Uh, Capstone Games is going to be there, and they have a few cool titles. Uh, they've got Rift Force, which was uh, kind of a hit on Kickstarter, a two-player dueling card game. There's Juicy Fruits, which is all about uh, getting collecting different types of fruits and you know getting the juice out of them, uh, competing to, do, to farm those fruits against your friends. Uh, there's Savannah Park, which is a game all about placing different types of animals in different ways as the game assigns you. And uh, Rorschach is the one of these that is kind of most up my alley, I think. It's, uh, you know, those Rorschach tests, the inkblot pictures, and you have to try to interpret them uh, from your, or put them together to get your friends to interpret different words or clues. Uh, but Capstone Games, you know, they have a lot of big ones, but I think th the ones that I've seen in this list, some of them are more on the on the lighter side, even more towards the party end of games. So I think it's interesting to see them uh, branching out a little bit with these releases. Check Games Edition is one that we've always loved, and of course, they've got some cool stuff. Galaxy Trucker is getting a whole new edition. It's got some tweaks, some different art, some different ruling and stuff, but if you were unfortunate enough to not pick up a copy yet and not try it, well, now's your time. We've also got an expansion for the Lost Runes of Arnak. This is the Expedition Leaders. It adds unique powers for players, though I have a sneaking suspicion, as probably I'll talk about at the end of this, a lot of people also use this as a time to pick up the base because they weren't able to pick that up earlier on. Yeah, be very cool to see how that works because uh, a lot of people like that game, and I'm, mm -hmm. and I like unique powers. I feel like that's always a good expansion uh, for. Oh well, no, yeah, this game definitely was good enough and had the room for the expansion, so it's yeah, mm -hmm. well received. Uh, now we got another new edition of a game from Edgar Spiele. It's Great Western Trail, a very popular game all about herding your cattle across America in the old West times. And the new edition has all new artwork, plus some tweaks, some additional stuff thrown in there as well. Uh, and uh, this is a game that both of us didn't get the chance to play, so we've been waiting eagerly to try out this new edition to jump in for the first time, but everybody yes. loves it. This is definitely uh, one of the many games on my list of trying to pick up, I think. Mm, yeah, good one. I, I always say I think because I've been to enough Gen Cons to know I might just never get the chance. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> But moving on, we've got Floodgate Games. First off, Vivid Memories is an interesting game where you're trying to collect childhood memories in this sort of 
pattern recognition, not recognition, pattern laying down game. But we've also got Vault Wars is getting an expansion, this one with Relic Roadshow, based on your classic Roadshow, which I find hilarious, the idea of having like the old antique Roadshow with magical items. <laughs> yeah, that's always a fun one. Yeah, I remember Vivid Memories from Kickstarter, and I thought that one looked pretty cool. There were a couple of these that were like, oh yeah, I remember that on Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot when, when you're looking at games in the list like this. Uh, Funko is going to be there, of course. Uh, they're showing off the Rocketeer Fate of the Future based off the Rocketeer movie. This is a two-player game where one player is the good guys and the other player is just the bad guys. Uh, and there's also going to be a Rocketeer. I think they're making a TV show on Disney Plus maybe. So they're, that's kind of coming back into the zeitgeist right now. And I've heard Funko's going to have a few other surprises there as well that we don't know about yet. But I liked the Rocketeer movie back in the day. So I'm curious to see how they translated it to a I game. need to watch it. I'm very curious. Mm. Uh, but speaking of properties, Gale Force 9, uh, they're known for plenty, but the big one is Dune. They've done a remake of their original Dune game, the one that is one of the most famous board games out there in terms of old, before the Golden Age. And this one, of course, is designed more with the movie in mind. But if Social Deduction is more of your thing, they've got Dune Betrayal, which is a Social Deduction game based in the Dune universe. So... Grab up all your Dune stuff before the movie comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited to try those. Dune Betrayal from the designer of The Resistance. So, you know, they went to the source. They went mm -hmm. to the guy who they knew could get it done. Uh, so excited for all the Dune games coming out. Bicycle's back. We've got games by Bicycle. Uh, they're doing more stuff that's not just your average 52-card playing card deck. Uh, a couple of unique new games. There's one called Crystallize, which has these really colorful uh, little square crystal pieces that you're trying to get rid of and slot into a board. Looks kind of like a unique sort of abstract game. And they've got Emergency Broadcast, uh, where you are are competing to be the best at fixing the aftermath of a flood. So you're responding to uh, rescue uh, SOS calls and trying to save people. Uh, a little close to home if you're in New Jersey these days. We've been going through some of that, but uh, a unique kind of a theme that we've seen. And it's cool to see Bicycle continue to try these different styles of games. Hobby World's going to be there. They will have some games that we've actually reviewed on our channel before, like the Spy Fest game as well as Cutterland. But they have this new one that is very weird and interesting. It's called Dubious. The idea is you are all detectives trying to find out what the other people's professions are based on the story, what items they have, what clothes they're wearing. So it seems like a, a very interesting twist on a lot of the hidden role, it seems almost like a story deduction game. I'm definitely gonna have to check them out and see, find out more about this game. Yeah, I'm hoping we may get hooked up at some point with a final copy of that, if, as well as maybe seeing the, the demo at Gen Con, because I'm, I'm interested in that one too. Yellow is gonna be there, of course. Uh, they have Korra, Rise of an Empire, and this is one of those Greek civilization building games, so we got another one of those. Uh, I, th I feel like this one was also on Kickstarter, I think maybe we had talked about it at some point, but uh, it looks like it's got some neat stuff going on. But I'm really most interested in their game Sticky Cthulhu. Uh, so this is a game where you have a sticky tentacle, an actual sticky tentacle, and you're trying to get pieces by slapping the tentacle onto different tiles and like bringing them back and sticking them to your tentacle. Cthulhu well, themed, of course. I love it. It sounds so <laughs> weird, but just <laughs> great. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so Mondo Games has one. It's called Fight Club The Home Game. I can't really talk too much about it because even in the board game description, it's like, look. That's the rule, right? Well, yes, but <laughs> it's pretty much like, look, the whole spoiler of the movie is the premise of this game. <laughs> so wow. um, watch the movie. Wow, that's even, I mean, it, it, I, yeah, it, I will say. I respect that as a spoiler phone. Yeah, and I, I will say this from because I know the movie. I think it's a very interesting take. I like it. it it's, I'll just say that it's a two-player game. We'll leave it at that. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I'm always curious to see something from Mondo and a game you wouldn't think that they would, a movie you wouldn't think they'd make a game based off of. Uh, Novu Games will be there with a new expansion for The Reckoners called Steel Slayer. This one it actually has different modules that you can either do one at a time or just throw them all in. The Reckoners was this big co-op game uh, based on the Brandon Sanderson novel. We were fighting off epic superheroes. This one has new heroes to fight against or villains, I suppose, depending on your perspective and other new stuff too. 
Uh, and they also have a game called Pinpoint that sounded fun to me. It's a party game kind of in the vein of Wavelength, where there's a few different modes, uh, but one of them is that you have to get someone to guess a number between 1 and 100. So you, like, give them a clue somewhere in that line. And they have a couple other variations on that. So mm. something maybe fun if you like that Wavelength style of gameplay. Interesting. Now, this is a big one. Pandasaurus has got plenty to show off. First off, they're increasing their world of Dinosaur Island with both Dinosaur World and Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. This was a Kickstarter a while back, but this could be your chance if you missed out on that to pick up all your dinosaur goodies. We've also got The Loop, which is an interesting cooperative game when you're trying to stop a mad scientist by jumping through time with an interesting little dice tower in the center. We've also got Brew, where you actually have trying to save nature. All the seasons and day and night are out of whack, so you're going to have to brew some potions, get some animals to help you, and hopefully put everything back in balance. Machi Koro 2 is going to be there. We've talked about it before. We're very excited to see what they've done to make Machi Koro 2, not just Machi Koro expansion. And then also Wild Space is a really interesting game that involves animal astronauts and trying to make the most efficient combos with your cards. Yeah, P Pandasaurus came to play this year, I say. <laughs> they have they have not slowed down at all. Yeah, <laughs> after 2020, they're just like, we're cooped up. That's enough. <laughs> we're going in. <laughs> they really got a lot going on. Yeah, Machi Koro 2. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a big one. Dinosaur World, I mean, that's huge too. That's... Right, that's an obvious one. Though Brew, I definitely want to try. I've seen a lot of uh, their posts about it, but, you know, mm. haven't been able to actually sit down and... See it on the table. I think Brew might be uh, of, might have been released somewhat recently at retail, so you might be able. Yeah, to pick, I think it like just did. Now. Uh, but that may be true for a bunch of these that we talk about, mm -hmm. depending on where you are in the world. Uh, Plan B Games has another uh, Golem game. There, this time it's the Golem edition of Equinox, which is uh, this game where you're different mythical creatures and you're competing to try to be uh, remembered, your legacy, and different stories as as time goes on. Now they got the Golem edition because that's what they, they do. Everybody likes these golems. It's fun. It's a different wacky theme. <laughs> so <laughs> is their goal just to make everything golem? Yeah, I, I, I hope that uh, more companies follow suit with the golems uh, <laughs> later on. <laughs> Portal games will be there and they'll have million dollar script. We actually talked about this on our podcast because it recently just came out. Yeah. And it is a crazy party game when you have two teams trying to pitch movie ideas to one exec and things tend to go a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy improv uh, competition, storytelling kind of a game. Speaking of games that are out there, you can try right now. That one, too, is available pretty widely already. Uh, Pretzel Games has one called Camel Up off season. So this is like a, a spin-off of Camel Up. It's not an expansion. And in this one, uh, you are going to market. You're giving the camels a rest. You're not racing them. Uh, you are actually bidding on different types of resources, products to sell, and your camels are carrying them on their back. Not It's not a dexterity game, but, but <laughs> metaphorically. And they all sell in different ways. So some of them you might need to sell like as many as you can at once. Some of them you maybe are only allowed to sell one at a time. So uh, that sounds like a cool twist on, on bidding and, you know, uh, using the Camel Up branding, which is fun. They should make it so that you, depending on how much money you make in Camel Up offseason, that's what you bring in to the regular Camel Up, and then you lose it all in betting. They should do that. <laughs> but Ravensburger is going to be there with a new version of Horrified. This is Horrified American Monsters. If you don't know, the original one was based on your classic black and white movies, you know, your Dracula, Frankenstein, Mummy. This one is based on more American mythos, your Bigfoot, Mothman, but the more of the idea is you're trying to find them because if you know anything about uh, Americans, we love trying to get those pictures. We can be able to sell them. So you're trying to hunt down these cryptids. Yeah, was Jersey Devil in there? I think that's I think one that's of them. one of them. Yeah, all right, cool. Represent. Um, Red Raven Games has Now or Never, which is the newest edition of their uh, World of Artsium. So this is the follow-up to Above and Below and Near and Far. Storybook game. Uh, you're, each player is a different faction, and you are uh, referencing a book and discovering new passages depending on what happens. Uh, it sounds like from what I've, I've read, this one, compared to the first two, is... Uh, uh, much more different. Above and Below and Near and Far, I think, kind of shared a fair amount of DNA. This sounds like more of a departure, which is cool. And they also have Sleeping Gods, which some people have had the chance to play already, but they're going to be showing it off there, which is another huge open world story kind of game that we've been very interested in following, as a lot of people have. Renegade Game Studios is going to have a lot there, and I'm sure even more than we're going to say, because they just had their uh, digital 
a convention and they announced a bunch of stuff. Clank in Space getting a new expansion. The uh, Clank in Space Adventures Pulse Arcade. We've also got Crimes and Capers. There's two of them. This is a new mystery deduction game. One of them is titled High School Hijinks. It's based more on 90s high school where you need to help your friend. While there's also Lady Lana's Last Wishes, which has to do with wills and death and all that fun stuff. <laughs> then we've got The Hunger. This is actually a game designed by Richard Garfield where you all play as vampires and you're pretty much trying to hunt humans and gather more power before the sun rises and hopefully make it back before you burn. Then Transformers has its deck building game and I believe, I don't think it'll be there, but they also announced a GI Joe deck building game a while back. So maybe they'll have a prototype there for that one as well. We've also got Vampire the Masquerade Rivals. There's actually one expansion we knew of, but there'll be another one there. We've got The Wolf and the Rat, as well as Blood and Alchemy. So anyone who's excited for your expandable collectible card game with Vampire Masquerade, definitely want to check those two out. Yeah, I think Renegade at Like Pandasaurus also came to play this year. They also show no sign of stopping. Well, I think that's also just par for the course of them. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's very true. <laughs> and uh, yeah, The Hunger, new Richard Garfield game, that's always pretty cool. Uh, but I'm pretty interested in trying most of those. Actually, just the point to point how, of how much things they brought. I accidentally skipped one. They have uh -oh. a new love letter as well based on the Princess Princess Ever After. Just to show you how much stuff they're going to bring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did, they also announced those new RPGs too based on some of those properties. You know, they... Right. They won't stop. I don't know if those are there. That's the, that's why I'm like, <laughs> right. they said it. It could be there. I don't know why. <laughs> they could have stuff there. We will see. Uh, restoration games, we know them and love them for taking old classics and putting a new spin on them. They've got some some of the stuff that they talked about earlier this year, too, in uh, one of their press conferences. Buried Treasure, that's, you know, like the berry that you eat, is all about trying to grab different berries uh, to make the best pie. So, you know, what's not to love there? Key to the Kingdom is one of these fantasy adventure games from the 90s that they have streamlined and improved for new audiences. Of course, Return to Dark Tower. That's the big one we've been seeing for plenty of years now. Giant electronic tower, co-op game, all kinds of crazy stuff going on as you play with sound effects and lights and things. Hoping that game sees a release relatively shortly. And also, uh, a new one for Unmatched, it's Battle of Legends Volume 2. So Battle of Legends was the original release of Unmatched, so this one includes uh, new characters from mythology like Achilles and Bloody Mary and some other interesting ones that are not uh, your typical ones you see in most games. So uh, if you like the Unmatched series, mm -hmm. you get four brand new characters to play as here. And honestly, I really love these legend sets and I hope maybe we get past, uh, we don't have to wait so long for three. Mm. Because I feel like pull, not only do they pull from general mythology, it's more diverse in its pulls, not just from cultures, just like it's not all gothic or something. So you get a, a much more variety in your collection. Yeah, it's a nice grab bag. <laughs> and WizKids is going to be there. And they've got some cool stuff. We've got Clash of Cultures Monumental Edition. This is just the Clash of Cultures, an older game. They're bringing back an all-in-one box. So this is a way to just get everything at once. And we've got some Dungeons & Dragons stuff. First, we've got an expansion for the Dungeons & Dragons adventuring system, Ghosts of Saltmarsh. But they also got a new one called Dungeons & Dragons Dungeon Scrawlers. This is a more family-friendly game, but you have different dungeons full of treasures and monsters, and you will choose a character, and your goal is to draw yourself through this maze, the dungeon, but each character has unique abilities. It sounds like a really fun drawing game that, of course, I'm already liking, so I'm definitely going to check this one out. Yeah, that sounds fun. Sounds like a fun use of the D&D &D license for something uh, more lighthearted and silly. And last one we're going to talk about really is Weird Miniatures. So as the name would imply, these guys usually just do miniatures, but they've got a couple physical tabletop games coming out as well, starting with Bayou Bash, a racing game. You are goblins uh, racing on different kinds of animals and using all kinds of tricks and schemes to get ahead of the other players. And Vagrant Song, this one is a campaign game with a lot of different scenarios to play through. Uh, it takes place on a train primarily, and it's got this very kind of a 1930s cartoonish mm -hmm. art style, uh, which is looks, looks very interesting too. So um, th those are the, the big ones from all the publishers that we're highlighting that are going to be there that we know about that we had time to speak on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's always so much more. And I guess the one thing I would want to add that I know for me, a lot of things I'm looking forward to are things that they're not new per se, but things I might have missed out on or didn't get a chance. For example, I know Cosmic Frog. There might be a chance to check that one out. That was, I know, a, a big hole in ours last been year. Been trying to find that, yeah, um, for a while. <laughs> and then there's also, I saw the... Uh, 
um, what Suzanne talked about the rolling right or flipping right game. Oh, super mega lucky mm -hmm. box. Yeah, that's gonna be there. So I'm gonna really <laughs> hope I can pick up uh, that up. Yeah, so that's gonna be a, a good one. And that's my other checklist. What has people talked about on our podcast? That's my <laughs> list and what I missed. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good way to do it. Uh, as I said at the top, you'll notice this is. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be shorter than our usual Gen Con preview videos because you're not. We're not talking about Fantasy Flight. We're not talking about Z-Man games. No plaid hat. No upper deck. No we usually have a is big not, presence. Not Asthma Day. No, no, they're not, but they are also yeah. not going to be there. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> listing different ones. Uh, upper Deck, also not Asthma Day, but uh, there's there's a lot of a lot of the ones who usually have a very big booth presence at the show mm -hmm. we're not going to be seeing. So uh, it's it sounds like these other companies and a lot of indie companies we probably haven't even talked about on this episode are going to be picking up the slack. But it'll be a different kind of a show. It'll be a little quieter perhaps this year. I don't know. Well, of course, let you know, because when Gen Con comes, we will be there covering it and stuff. So stay tuned to whether this channel or our podcast so you can keep up to date on all the stuff we're releasing. Yeah, we're going to have uh, some cool like mini episodes uh, for our podcast released during Gen Con. And of course, we'll be posting tons of stuff, uh, not only on YouTube, but on our social media. Uh, so, you know, just go to RollForCrit.com. You'll find all that stuff there. In fact, we'll probably have RollForCrit.com slash Gen Con. It'll be your one-stop shop to make sure you don't miss any of our coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'd also love to hear from you in the comments. I really want to know which of this massive list of games are you most excited for, or is there something that we left out or even a whole publisher maybe we didn't get the chance to talk about that you're excited to see what they bring this year. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of good ones. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good ones that I'm interested in. And of course, it always helps us too. So if you're like, you need to check out these people or this game now, we'll be like, okay, we'll check them out. So <laughs> yes, tell us what you want us to do. let us know. Direct us like rats in a maze. <laughs> Put the cheese down at the booth you want us to see. Uh, thanks for watching. It's going to be very interesting this year, so you don't want to miss what happens. Gen Con, again, takes place uh, just at the end of next week, mid-September, so we'll see how it goes. Till then, I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this was Roll for Crit. If you liked this video, then like the video and subscribe to our channel. That would be awesome of you. We've also got a Patreon page, so we thank our Patreon supporters who also get access to some cool bonus content. If you want to see more of us, we are streaming live on Twitch and a separate YouTube channel every single week. Check that all out at rollforcrit.com live.